Welcome to Chapter 9, Part 3, Limiting Reactant. So you're probably wondering, what on earth is a limiting reactant? Well, this is the reactant you run out of first, simply put, and it's the one that controls the amount of product. For example, if I had a reactant of 8 car bodies, and I had another reactant of 48 tires, the question is, how much product would I make? Well, I'm going to get out the handy dandy pen because we can see that in this particular scenario, it's the mole ratio that controls the amount of product. So let me get my board. All right, and this says that for every eight cars, we're going to need four tires. So I have eight cars. What am I going to run out of first, cars or tires? Well, these four are going to be used, and these four and these four, and these four, so now I have to see one, two, three, four, five cars now have tires, six cars, seven cars, eight cars. Let me make sure I did that right. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight cars. So what am I going to run out of first, tires or cars? That's right, I'm going to run out of cars first. Now I can give all eight cars tires. So my limiting reactant in this case would be the cars. So let me put that down. So we have a limiting reactant equals cars because that's the one I'm going to run out of first. No matter how many tires I have, the number of cars controls the amount of product. And in this case, I have 16 tires in excess. Too much, more than enough. Let's take a look at another example. Here I have five carbon atoms and a bunch of oxygen elements and I need to know how much carbon dioxide can I make. Well the nice part is this equation is already balanced. So it's a one to one mole ratio. Now what I would do to figure out how much product I would make is get my handy dandy pen out. All right, here we go. Handy dandy pen, where, oh there it is. All right, I'm gonna change it to yellow. Okay, so this says, well I guess yellow is not such a great color after all. We'll go with green. So for every one carbon atom, I need one oxygen molecule. So that's going to make one carbon with two oxygens. So I'm gonna do it again, one carbon, with two oxygens. Oops, better cross off the oxygens. One carbon and two oxygen atoms. Phew, one more carbon and two oxygens. And one more carbon and two oxygens. So who was my limiting reactant? Well, the limiting reactant in this case was carbon. And who's in excess? Who do I have so much of it doesn't matter? Well that would be the oxygen. Let's take a look at this example. So I have three nitrogen molecules. No, yeah I do. Three nitrogens are pictured and a bunch of hydrogens are pictured. Now the mole ratio is one nitrogen for every three hydrogen. And I'm going to synthesize ammonia. So how many do I need to synthesize ammonia? Okay, well we have a balanced chemical equation. And this says for every one nitrogen I need three hydrogen and that will give me two ammonia molecules. So there we go. I went ahead and used up, let's find this guy. That gave me the two nitrogens you find in ammonia. And I had to use up three of these guys. And that made these. Do I have enough to do it again? Well, one nitrogen takes three hydrogen. And that gives me these. So who was my limiting reactant? Well, the limiting reactant was the hydrogen. I ran out of that first. This is the limiting reactant and the nitrogen is an excess. So on the other side of the equation, we have one leftover nitrogen molecule. This is a definition that you need to know, a stoichiometric mixture. It means you have exactly the correct amount of reactants needed. 
There's no limiting reactant and there's nothing in excess. For example, if I had one molecule of methane and I had two molecules of oxygen, that's all I have, one to two ratio, both of those can combine to make one carbon dioxide molecule and two water molecules. Absolutely everything I started with goes into making product. There's no limiting reactant and nothing is left over in excess. Let's take another look at an example of a stoichiometric mixture. The synthesis of ammonia. This one is used a lot in this chapter, I'm not sure why. However, if all of my reactants are accounted for, so notice in every single one of these dotted lines, hold on, I'm gonna get my board. Here we go. In every single one of these dotted lines, we have a one to three ratio. And as you can see, it's all used up. There isn't anything left over. And so after the reaction, we make exactly what we need. There's no limiting reactant, nothing is in excess. So whenever you read a stoichiometric mixture, what that means is you will not have a limiting reactant. Here's how to find the limiting reactant. But before I do that, I do want to remind you about the word excess. If you look on the previous slides that we did, well, the previous videos we did, you would notice that a lot of times it would say that one of the reactants is in excess. And what that means is you have so much of it, you don't have to worry about a limiting reactant. So both the word excess or stoichiometric mixture means you don't have to find a limiting reactant. However, if you notice in this problem, we've been given 2.5 grams of nitrogen and five grams of hydrogen. And how much ammonia do we need? One of the ways you can identify a limiting reactant problem is it's given you quantities of both reactants. So you have no idea which one of those is going to control the amount of product you make. It could be the nitrogen, it could be the hydrogen. There's a series of steps to do, learn the steps, and you won't get these wrong, that'll help you find out which one of these reactants you run out of first and which one is in excess. So the first step you need to do is calculate the number of moles of both of your reactants. Go ahead, pause the video, find moles. It's a one step, grams to moles for each reactant. All right, well, if I have 2.5 grams of nitrogen, and I know there's the molar mass of nitrogen, then I end up with that many moles of nitrogen. Now do the same thing for the hydrogen. Remember, molar mass is always grams per one mole. All right, now we have the moles. So who's limiting? Well, that's kind of a trick question because you can't tell yet. If you recall, these are all mole ratios. So I went ahead and put the molage that I have. I had grams, but we can't play with grams. We have to play with moles. So that's how much molage of each reactant I have. I still don't know which one's going to run out first. But what I can do is figure out how many moles I need. Pick one of the molages, it doesn't matter. I went ahead and picked hydrogen just because that number was still in my calculator. And what this problem is saying is if I use up all of the hydrogen, all 0 0.0248 moles of the hydrogen, I want this one to be all gone, how much nitrogen do I need to make all of the hydrogen go away? Well, it turns out I need that much nitrogen. So the big question is, do I have enough? And it's a really good idea to make sure you write need next to this. Need and have. It helps keep it square what's going on. Do I have enough nitrogen? Look back at what we started with. I started with 0 0.0892 moles and I only need 0 0.008. Well, yeah, I have plenty of nitrogen. So what that means is that's the hydrogen that is our limiting reactant because I need a lot less than what I have. 
So now I can use the limiting reactant, which in this case is the hydrogen, because I had so much nitrogen it wasn't even funny. So I'm going to use the hydrogen now to figure out the amount of product. Starting with moles of hydrogen, that's how much I have. I need to convert that to grams of ammonia. So what's going to go in the numerator? I have moles and I need grams. So I'm going to get my handy dandy pen out here. So in order to do this, I need to go from moles of hydrogen to moles of ammonia to grams of ammonia. So what am I going to put in this numerator? Two moles of ammonia. Then I have one mole of ammonia for the molar mass of ammonia. Plugging that into the handy dandy calculator, that's our amount of product. Just to recap what we did, you started off with grams of one of the reactant and converted that to moles of the other of the same reactant. Then you took the grams of the other reactant and converted that to moles. Now that you have moles of both reactants, then pick one. It doesn't matter. I just chose A for this one. And using a mole ratio, then I was able to figure out how many moles of B, the other reactant, I would need. I'm going to compare that to the amount of moles I originally had, and that will tell me which one of these is the limiting reactant. Then you take your moles of your limiting reactant, convert that using the mole ratio to the moles of the product that you're after, and then that will give you your grams of product. I hope this clears it up a little bit. Maybe we just need more practice. Let's try the limiting reactant problem in actual practice. So you're welcome to try this on your own if you want, but here's the balanced chemical equation and those are the two quantities of the reactants that were given. And what I want to do now is write down grams of what I want under the nitrogen. So this is where I'm going to write grams. What was the first step? Well that's to convert each one of the reactants to moles. So 18.1 grams of ammonia and let's see 17.034 grams of ammonia to one mole. Molar mass is always one mole. Alright, see what that gives us. Now let's see, my calculator says 1.06 moles of ammonia. Alright, now let's do the same thing for the copper 2 oxide. So 90.4 grams of CuO. You know, line straight. Grams of copper oxide. And that's of course going to be to one mole of copper oxide. Well, let's see, I'm going to need a calculator here. So 63.55 plus 16, 79.55 grams. Now I need the molage, so 90.4 divided by that number. 1.14 moles. Well, I cannot tell who the limiting reactant is just yet. If you recall, we have to run a mole ratio. It doesn't matter which one you choose. I like to use this one because I still have the 1.14 in my calculator. So 1.14 moles of copper 2 oxide. What I'm trying to find out with this step in green is if I make all of the copper 2 oxide go away, how much ammonia do I need? And do I have enough to make that happen? Well, the mole ratio says 3 moles of copper 2 oxide for every 2 moles of ammonia. All right, let's see what we get with the calculator. So take that number times 2, divide it by 3, 0 0.758. 
0 0.758 moles of ammonia and I like to write the word needed here. That's how much I need to make all that copper two oxide go away. Well, obviously, if I'm going to need this much, I have enough. Therefore, this guy becomes the limiting reactant. Now we're ready to just do the basic stoichiometry like we did on the previous slides. We're going to start with the limiting reactant, so 1.14 moles of copper two oxide, and I get to try to draw a straight line here. Ooh, almost. All right, now we have moles of this guy. We need to get to moles of the nitrogen so we can get to grams of the nitrogen. So the balanced equation says three moles of the copper two oxide for one mole of nitrogen and one mole of nitrogen I believe that's 2802, let's see, 14.01 times 2, yep, well I don't know what I typed, but yeah, it's 28.02, 02 grams, let's see what we get, so 1.14, okay, I can't use my calculator, 1.14 times 28.02, divide that by 3, 10.6, 10.6 grams of nitrogen. And we have the correct number of sig figs. There's our final answer. Try this problem on your own. When you get stuck or if you get finished, then push play and see how you did. And the last thing I want to add is that I need grams of iron underneath this. So let's put grams here. First, you have to find the moles of each one of the reactants. Sorry, my board's banging on the computer. So we have 5.00 grams. Ah, that's a 5. Well, I guess I should have written Fe203. Okay, well. I'm going to find the molar mass of that guy. So for now I'm just going to write grams of Fe2O3, well it's iron 3 oxide, for one mole of iron 3 oxide. Okay, so handy dandy calculator. 55.85 times 2 plus 48. 159.7. So now let's find the moles. So 5 divided by the molar mass, 0 0.0313. 0 0.0313 moles of iron 3 oxide. Now let's do the same thing for carbon monoxide which we also have 5.00 grams of carbon monoxide and that's 32 grams of CO I think 12 and 16 no that's not right that'd be 28 sheesh what am I doing trying to use my head that's what I'm trying to do let's erase that okay try it again pen 28 grams for every one mole. I guess it should be 28.01. Alrighty, so how many moles? 5 divided by 28.01, 0 0.179. So who's the limiting reactant? Yeah, well, you can't tell yet. Still have to do another step. Got to do that mole ratio step. I'm going to start with this one because that's what's in my calculator last. So 0 0.179 moles of carbon monoxide. Now if I want to make all of the carbon monoxide that I have go away, how much of the other reactant do I need? That's what I'm trying to answer. Well, there's three moles of this for every one mole of the other reactant. So I need to divide that last number by 3, 0 0.060. Mm, 
moles of Fe2O3 needed? Do I have enough? No, I don't have enough. I need a lot more than I have. So this guy becomes our limiting reactant. Now we're going to use the limiting reactant to find out the amount of iron made. So here we go, 0 0.0313 moles of the limiting reactant. So we're starting now with moles of this. And I need to go to moles of the iron so I can get to grams of iron. And the balanced equation says one mole of iron three oxide for every two moles of iron and one mole of iron has 55.85 grams of iron. Alright, so pick up your handy dandy calculator and see what you get. So on this problem we end up with 3.50 grams of iron, where my pen go? There it is, of iron produced. So in the yellow we found moles of each reactant. In the blue we found out how much of the Fe2O3 I would need if I wanted to use up all of the carbon monoxide. And it turns out I need a lot more than I have. So that made this one the limiting reactant and then we use the limiting reactant to find the amount of product. Here we have another one. Please pause the video. See if you can do this one on your own. Now the goal here is to find the number of grams. We don't know who's going to control the reaction because we've been given amounts of both reactants. Big clue. Limiting reactant. And, you know, the video is kind of about limiting reactants. So here we go. First step is we have to convert both reactants to moles because these are not, these coefficients are not gram relationships. They're mole relationships. So we have 254 grams of iron 3 oxide. And I need to convert that just to moles. Sorry about the straight lines, not. So here we have grams of iron 3 oxide. We need to convert that to moles. Remember, molar mass is always per one mole. So that's 159.7 grams, which then gives us 1.59 moles of Fe2O3. Now let's find moles of carbon. So we have 25 grams of carbon. So 12.01 grams of carbon for one mole of carbon. So we end up with 2.08 moles of carbon. Now our next step then is to find out which mole is the limiting reactant because this is how much we have. All we did was find out how much we have, not in terms of grams now, but in terms of moles. And if you want, you could write 1.59 moles here and 2.08 moles here because that's how much we have. So let's find out how much we need. So I'm going to start off with, uh, I'm going to do the 2.08 since that's still in my calculator. 2.08 moles of carbon. And we're going to use the mole relationship to find out what we need. So I have 3 moles of carbon to 2 moles of Fe2O3. So I end up with 1.39 moles of Fe2O3 needed. So do I have enough of the iron 3 oxide? 1.59 is what we need. 
1.3 died, sorry, is what we need. And we have 1.59, so we have plenty, which means now that carbon is the limiting reactant. This is what is going to limit how much of the iron we actually produce. So now we're ready to actually do the problem. So we're going to start off with moles of carbon, going to moles of that, so we can go to grams. And that color's not real good, so I'm going to go ahead and change it to a better color. Let's try the green. So here we go, 2.08 moles of carbon. Not bad for a straight line. Now, moles of carbon, we have three moles of carbon. For every four moles of iron, and one mole of iron for every 55.85 grams of iron. So we end up then with 155 grams of iron. Now if you recall, I lost my spot. Oh, I know. If you recall, this 25 should have been 25.0 from if you look at your problem. So there's three sig figs and there's three and there's three and we're done. Now here's a fun question that I like to put on tests, so pay attention. How many grams of each reactant are left over at the end of the reaction? Now if you recall from the previous problem, that was the information we had plus one more very important information, which was the carbon was our limiting reactant. So that means we totally ran out of the carbon. It was all gone. So the first part of the question is easy. The amount of carbon left over at the end of the reaction is none, zero grams, because it was the limiting reactant. Here's the one that's causing us problems. How much of that is left over at the end of the reaction? Well, the easy way to do it is you take your limiting reactant. So there we have 2.08 gram, moles, sorry, of carbon. And how much iron was left over after we used up all of the carbon? All right, now there's one mole, sorry, there's three moles of carbon for every two moles of Fe2O3. Let's see if I can straighten out that line. And we know that one mole of Fe2O3 has 159.7 grams of Fe2O3. So let's find out how much iron 3 oxide was actually used in this reaction. So doing that, I find out that I have 221 grams of Fe2O3 that was actually used in this reaction. So how much is left over? You simply take 254 minus 221 grams of Fe2O3 and you end up with, you end up with 33 grams of fe 2 Oh, three. And our sig figs are correct because when you subtract two numbers, you want to have your answer have the same number of decimal places. And since there's no decimal places in either one of those, there's no decimal place in your final answer. We're done with the problem. Up next, percent yield.